Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR3U1 video. This will be the last video of chapter 8 on discrete functions financial applications and we will be covering specifically in this lesson section 8.3 on compound interest working with present value instead of future value. Here's the chapter outline once again and again we're working with present value and you can find extra practices questions on this topic on pages 498 to 500. There's only a couple points in our success criteria this time. We just want to learn and understand present value and what it is, and also learn the formula for present values and how to apply it. So let's go over what present value is. Then we'll go over the equation to calculate uh, present value, and then we'll get into a couple of examples. The definition for present value is the principal, so our initial value invested or borrowed, that we will need to invest or borrow to get a specific future value in a certain amount of time at a certain interest rate. Instead of P, we use PV uh, to differentiate between principal and present value because we might be calculating for one or the other, even though they mean the same thing. If we take a look at the bottom here, we have our present value equation. So let's go over it. Present value equals the amount or future value, right? The amount we have after a certain period of time, all over one plus the interest rate per compounding period. So remember, this interest rate, we need to be careful, careful for the compounding period type because sure, we could be annually, but we could also be working with quarterly, and monthly and all those other types of um, compounding periods. So we need to divide the interest rate appropriately. And finally, we have one plus I, all in brackets to the power of N, which is our number of compounding periods. And again, we wanna make sure we get N right, which is the number of years times um, the type of our compounding period, right? So if it's quarterly, we multiply by four, if it's semi, Annually, we multiply by two. Uh, if it's if it is uh, annually, we just multiply by one, so we'll get the same thing, and so on. So let's get right into a couple of examples because that's pretty much all the theory we need to know uh, for present value, as we already learned about compound interest and how it works. So <clears throat> we have our first example here. It says Rico can invest money at ten percent annually compounded quarterly right so we need to be careful because our interest rate is every year but we're compounding quarterly so we know we're going to have to divide our interest rate he would like fifteen thousand dollars in 10 years how much does he need to invest right now so we're, it's the question asking us for our present value but here we have our future value that we need to to get F, V, or A, either one works. 10 years, it's going to be our time, our number of years. So let's see what we have. We have our future value. It's going to equal 15,000. We have our interest rate, which we need to calculate. We have our time, 10 years. <laughs> so we need to calculate for interest rate should be the other way we don't know this yet and when we calculate for our number of compounding periods because we don't know that yet so let's first calculate for i our i it's going to be if we remember let me box this in so we know this is the information that we're looking for and finally of course we want to look for present value okay I remember it's going to be our annual interest rate or air for short times our type of compounding period, uh, our, our compounding period time, which is quarterly. So we know we're not multiplying. We need to divide by four because again, we are 
um, we are taking 10% of the investment, right? Or taking 10% of our amount each year, right? But since we're um, getting interest every three months because we're compounding quarterly, we need to break this 10% down into four parts. And if we divide it by four, we will get, so our 10%, if we divide our 10% by four, we'll get 2.5%. So every three months, we're gonna get an interest rate of 2.5% of our amount, because again, we're using compound interest. Compound interest, we take a fraction of our total amount that we have right now. So our annual interest rate is gonna be 0 0.1, that's 10%. If we divide it by four, we will get 0 0.025, which is 2.5%. And our N is going to be number of years times, again, our type of compounding period, which is quarterly. So we're going to multiply by four because every year we um, earn interest four times. And so N is going to be our number of years, which is 10 times four. So our N is going to be 40. So from... Uh, the time Rico invests his money uh, to the time that 10 years have passed, he there will be 40 compounding periods where he will earn interest. He will earn interest 40 times. And each of these times, we're taking a, a fraction, right? We're taking 2.5% of the amount we have. So at first, obviously, if uh, I, we actually don't know the present value yet, but whatever the present value is, we take 2.5% of that and we add it to our present value. Then whatever amount we get, we take 2.5% of that and we add it to our value that we have now. And we keep doing that all of 10 years, right? Four times a year. So now that we have all this information, we can calculate for present value, which is going to be our future value or our amount all over one plus our interest rate one plus our interest rate to the power of n. So PV is gonna equal amount, which is 15,000, which is what we want after 10 years, all over one plus our interest rate, which is 0 0.025 per compounding period, and n, which is 40 compounding periods. So our present value is gonna be about, so we have one plus 0 0.025 to the power 40, and we're going to get have 15,000 divided by that. That's going to be about 5,000 5,586.46. Therefore, Rico forgot to underline this. Therefore, therefore Rico um, needs to invest $5,586 with 46 cents now to get to his future value of 15,000 in 10 years at a rate of 10% annually, um, compounding quarterly. Here's our second example. It says Monica wants to start a business and needs to borrow some money. Her bank would charge her 6.4% compounded quarterly. Monica wants to repay the loan in five years, but doesn't want the amount she pays um, back to be more than 20,000. What is the maximum amount that she can borrow and how much interest will she pay if she doesn't, how much interest will she pay if she doesn't pay anything back until the end of five years? Okay, so this is a little different because we're borrowing money instead of investing money, but it's the same concept because the bank this time is kind of investing it into Monica and Monica is the one that has to pay it back, but we're using the same exact equations um, to get our answer because she says she doesn't wanna pay more than $20,000 after the five years. So this, it's gonna be our max future value, right? So we're aiming for 20,000, right? Our annual interest rate 
will be 6.4%, and we're compounding quarterly. So we know our I is going to change, our N is going to change, and our time is five years. So again, we want to calculate for I. It's going to be air, as we said before, annual interest rate divided by our type of compounding period, which is quarterly. So we divide by four. So I is going to equal 0 0.064, that's 6.4%, dividing by four. And now we're splitting that 6.4% out into four parts because we're earning interest again four times a year to 0 0.016, which is 1.6%. Now we calculate for our N, which is number of years times, times our type of compounding period, which is quarterly. So we multiply by four. So our N will be five years times four. So our number of compounding periods will be 20. So from the moment she gets the loan from the bank to the moment she has to pay it back in five years, it will have been 20 compounding periods. So the bank will charge her interest 20 times. So now we can use our present value formula, right? Which is gonna equal amount or future value times a, sorry, amount over one plus I, our interest rate to the power of compounding uh, periods. So PV is gonna equal 20,000 all over one plus 0 0.016 to the power of number of compounding periods, which we calculated to be 20. Our present value is gonna be one plus 0 0.016 power of 20, 20,000 divided by this. It's gonna give us 14,559.81. Therefore, the max she can borrow for her business is $14,559.81. If she borrows any more than this, she will go over her 20,000 mark. And that's it. So let's go. And that is it for this lesson. And that is it for chapter eight. Um, a little bit of a shorter chapter, but nonetheless important and a lot of real life applications with this chapter. So I hope you guys uh, could find everything okay and always make sure to keep practicing.